The topic of our lecture is Specifics of human communication, similarities and differences. Learning objectives of our lecture is to define cultural similarities and differences, to summarize the main functions and components of communication, discuss how intercultural communication affects interpersonal relationships. Outline of our lecture is cultural differences in relationships, interpersonal communication patterns, intrapersonal communication patterns. We will introduce with the following terms of the lecture theme, such as culture, cultural identification, cultural markers, cultural beliefs, cultural attitudes, cultural values, norms, collectivistic culture, individualistic culture, high context culture, intrapersonal communication, intrapersonal communication, symbols, initial contact. Intercultural communication is the exchange of information between individuals who are unlike culturally. This definition implies that two or more individuals may be unlike in their national culture, ethnicity, age, gender, or in other ways that affect their interaction. The dissimilarity means that effective communication between them is particularly difficult. The cultural unlikeness of the individuals who interact is the unique aspect of intercultural communication. One type of difference occurs when the two or more participants in a communication situation each have a different national culture. If the two communication participants differ in age, one individual is a teenager and the other is a parent, the younger person has been socialized into a somewhat different culture than the adult. For example, while discussing rap music, which the parent regards as just loud noise and inferior to classical music, the teenager feels that rap is a meaningful expression of contemporary culture. This information exchange among individuals who differ in age also as intercultural communication because the teenager and the parent have somewhat different cultures. Similarity information exchange between individuals who differ in religion, ethnicity, disability, status, health or in other characteristics can be affected by their cultural or subcultural differences. Now consider two individuals who differ in their socioeconomic status. Culture is defined as a total way of life of people, composed of their learned and shared behavior patterns, values, norms, and material objects. Culture is a very general concept. Nevertheless, culture has very powerful effects on individual behavior, including communication behavior. Not only do nationalities and ethnic groups have cultures, for example, Japanese culture, Mexican culture, African American culture, etc., but so do communities, organizations, and other systems. For example, the IBM Corporation has its own culture. Culture is stored in individual human beings in the form of their beliefs, attitudes, values. Beliefs are an individual's representations of the outside world. Some beliefs are seen as very likely to be true. Others are as seen as less probable. Beliefs serve as a storage system for the content of our past experiences, including thoughts, memories. 
Beliefs are shaped by the individual's culture. When a belief is held by most members of a culture, we call it a cultural belief. Culture influences the perceptions and behaviors of the individual sharing the culture through beliefs, values, and norms. They are important building blocks of culture. Not everyone in a society holds exactly the same cultural beliefs. In other words, an individual's culture doesn't totally determine his or her beliefs. But the members of a society who share a common culture have relatively more similar beliefs than do individuals of different cultures. For instance, most Japanese believe that gift-giving is much more important than do people in the United States. West African people believe in magic and in the religious sacrifice of animals more than do individuals in most other cultures. Attitudes like beliefs are internal events and not directly observable by other people. Attitudes are emotional responses to objects, ideas and people. Attitudes store these emotional responses in the same way that beliefs store the content of past events. People express opinions, observable verbal behavior and engage in other behaviors partially on the basis of their attitudes and beliefs. Attitudes and beliefs form a storage system for culture within the individual. Attitudes and beliefs are internal and are not publicly observable. We cannot know your attitudes or your beliefs directly, but we can observe what we say, our expressed opinions, and what we do, our behavior. Many attitudes are based on cultural values. For instance, in the United States, freedom is a dominant value. In others, it's just one value among others. The meaning of any value, including freedom, differs across cultures. Values are what people who share a culture regard strongly as good or bad. Values have an evaluative component. They often concern desired goals, such as the values of mature love, world peace. Values also concern ways of behaving that lead to these goals, such as valuing thrift, honesty, or speaking and acting quietly so as not to make noise that disturb other people. Culture values involve judgments, they specify what is good or bad, and are normative, they state or imply what should be. For instance, most people in the United States feel that bullfighting is disgusting and cruel, but to many Mexicans and Spaniards it is an important and exciting sport. A cultural clash is defined as the conflict that occurs between two or more cultures when they disagree about a certain value. A cultural clash may involve strongly held values such as those concerning religion. Cultural clashes occur frequently in cities such as Miami that are composed of a large number of ethnic groups. For instance, a 14-year-old girl asked her parents for permission to go to a shopping mall with her friends. They refused because of the Muslim values that unmarried women shouldn't be seen in public unless chaperoned by parents or older brothers. 
The adolescent daughter insisted on going to the mall, so her parents chained her to her bed. As the degree of intercultural difference becomes wider in human communication situations, information exchange is likely to be less effective. Meanings are less likely to be shared as a result of communication exchange. The message intended by the source participant has less probably of being interpreted predictably by the receiver if the two are culturally unlike. The basis for uh, understanding one another narrows as cultural differences increase. When each participant in a communication exchange represent a different culture, the likelihood of effective communication is lessened. Communication between unlike individuals doesn't have to be ineffective. For instance, in the participants can emphasize with each other, that is, put themselves in the shoes of the other person then they may be able to overcome the ineffective communication. Further, the individuals can try to learn about people of different cultures. Collectivistic versus individualistic cultures We define a collectivistic culture as one in which the collectivi collectivity's goals are valued over those of the individual. In contrast, an individualistic culture is one in which the individual's goals are valued over those of the collectivity. Individualism, collectivism is perhaps the most important dimension of cultural differences in behavior across the cultures of the world. The nature of the self is different in an individualistic versus a collectivistic culture. Culture shapes one's self, and thus one's communication, perceptions, and other behavior. In an individualistic culture, the individual per perceives himself or herself as independent. In a collectivistic culture, the individual mainly thinks of himself, herself, as connected to others. To be independent in one's thinking or action would be considered selfish, rude, in poor taste. An individual who is not good team player is punished for breaking the norm on collectivism. Interaction between individuals with these different perceptions of self can easily result in misinterpreting the other's behavior. Obviously, not everyone in a collectivistic culture is equally collectivistic in thinking and behavior, nor are all of the individuals in an individualistic culture equally individualistic. Communication is the process through which participants create and share information with one another as they move toward teaching mutual understanding. Communication is involved in every aspect of daily life from birth to death. It is universal. Communication is defined as a symbolic process whereby meaning is shared and negotiated. In other words, communication occurs whenever someone attributes meaning to another's words or actions. Because communication is so pervasive, it is easy to take it for granted and even not to notice it. One way to understand the crucial role of communication in all human activities is to consider individuals who have had little or no human communication. 
isolate are children who for some reason have grown up without talking to anyone. While physically human, such isolates cannot talk or read and are completely lacking in social relationship skills. Communication is also a process involving several components. People who are communicating a message that is being communicated, verbal or nonverbal, a channel through which the communication takes place and a context. What are the main elements in communication process through which participants create and share information with one another in order to reach a mutual understanding? Communication is receiver-oriented. Human con communication is never perfectly effective. Initial contact and uncertainty among strangers. An interpersonal communication process must have a starting place and getting a conversation underway with a complete stranger is particularly difficult. Uncertainty is an individual's inability to predict or to understand some situation due to a lack in of information about alternatives. The degree of uncertainty between two strangers is greatest, of course when they come from different cultural backgrounds. You do not even know if you share a common language with the other person. What if the other person doesn't speak your language. In what language should you begin the conversation? When meeting a business counterpart from another culture, should you kiss or shake hands? These uncertainties are all inhibitors to beginning a conversation with a cultural strangers. Interpersonal and intrapersonal communication. Communication is fundamentally intrapersonal. Intrapersonal communication is information exchange that occurs inside of one person. It is the process of selecting and interpreting symbols to present thoughts, perceptions or physical reality. In contrast, interpersonal communication involves the face-to-face -face exchange of information between two or more people. Interpersonal communication is the process of exchanging mutually understood symbols. You communicate with yourself intrapersonal as well as with others interpersonal. Summarizing, I would like to say that communication helps people create meaning rather than just transmit meaning. It is a process of creating meaning for the messages received from other people. Humans are sense makers. They decode communication messages in ways that make sense to them, thus forming perceptions that guide their behavior. The essence of intrapersonal communication is the process through which an individual creates meaning for himself out of the information in a message.